When last seen, this lightweight bridge hammock system weighed just under 10 ounces. Now it's picked up just a little over 3 extra ounces, and why? Evan, the fellow who's taking possession of this, lives in Florida, and doesn't want to share his hammock with the big bugs they have down there, not any time, not any place. So he asked me to build in a on all the time, full enclosure, zipped in bug net. So for those that are interested, hang on for the tour, and I'll show you how it was that we did that. And uh, as an extra added bonus, uh, we'll look at a sub 10 ounce underquilt that can go on this as well. Because the bug net's going to be on all the time, the zipper extends only along one side from pole to pole and is sewn in all the way around the rest of the edges. You'll also notice off on each of these corners there's an extra bit of fabric that I've sewn in that serves two purposes. One is that it can hide the end of the zipper. Um, it can hide the ends where the pieces of the bug net uh, that come together, uh, and they won't always come together perfectly, uh, can be hidden. And also it provides an extra bit of protection from the sharp bits of the pole when it's put in and out, just in case uh, it's not gotten right the first time, um, it will hit this and not tear through the bug netting. The cord channel doesn't give us much purchase for sewing in the zipper, so what I've done is to take a strip of fabric, when finished is about two inches wide, sewed it to the bottom of the cord channel, and then sewed the zipper on top of that. And so it extends up about a couple of inches. Now, a good place to find this fabric is from the piece that's cut out to form the suspension curve, because its curve is exactly right. Uh, so we've done that on the zipper side, and we've also done that on the far side so that we have balance. The bug net body has three pieces, one each for the end caps and the main body. They are cut separately and then fitted together. To get the dimensions for the main body, I put a ridge line from the top of one suspension triangle to the other. I made it taut, I got inside with a yardstick and then To get the dimensions of the bug net then, lay in the hammock. They have a taut ridge line, took a measurement from the ridge line to the edge of the hammock at the center. Did that on the other side just to make sure that it was symmetric, and it was. Repeated that measurement at the head of the hammock and saw that the width at the head was only a couple of inches uh, narrower than the width at the middle. So um, it was easy enough then to uh, put a curve in the bug net that's at the right length from pole to pole, plus um, a couple of inches at each end for some error and uh, some seaming, and uh, then could cut the bug net and then fit it to the side, and that worked out just fine. The geometry of the end cap piece is actually fairly simple when you think of it as uh, the adjoining of three triangles. One triangle goes from the ridge line to the pole corner and then up to here where the, uh, the fabric ends and then back up like so and we can measure what that ought to be. The second triangle has a base from here to here and then equal legs um, up to this point. And then the third triangle is identical to this one but on that side. And you fit all those together, the area of those together, and it gives you the shape that you need to cut. It's worth seeing how the ridge line is put together. Right here where the suspension triangle meets the fixed eye from the suspension, I've worked in a loop. It happens to be fixed with a uh, diamond knot. That's unnecessary. The key thing is that it be a loop. And then that serves as a place to bring cord through. This is zing it and then fix it off in a taut line and that's going to make this end adjustable. The other end of the ridge line is as before. Uh, we have a loop that's fitted through the join of the suspension triangle with a fixed eye from the suspension. It's again uh, a loop that's fixed off uh, with a diamond knot, only this time the diamond knot is going to be an attachment point. For the end of the ridge line is a loop that has one of these sliders that I like to uh, fix loops over jams, and so we can just uh, attach the uh, ridge line when we need to and disattach it uh, when we don't want it, for example, when we roll up the hammock. Now to get in, you want to make sure that the bug net is uh, as open as it can be. It's got two zipper pulls. Settle in on the inside, move it up over the head. See, there's just enough room to bring one in, take off the shoes carefully. Want to get the zipper started. From inside now, it's interesting to see the tension on the bug net. You see that it is tight. It's up out of the way. You see it's a little ditty bag. Um, 
there's no sag, no looseness. It's a, a little bit tight, but not too tight. Um, it's keeping the bugs out and giving one lots of space on the inside. It's quite a nice environment. One of the benefits of using a bridge hammock is that you can get the warmth that you need in an underquilt with a smaller underquilt than is typical for a gathered end hammock. And the reason for that is that you lay straight like so and you don't move that much, at least not on a diagonal. And so the width only needs to be wide enough to capture your body when you're lying there. So 32 to 4 to 34 inches um, ought to be enough. And then you can make it as long as needs to be. Um, so I made a differential cut uh, hammock on how it seems like six years ago uh, for one of my early bridge hammocks. Um, it uh, is exactly 32 inches wide and 48 inches long. This is a sewn through design. There's a little over three ounces of down in it. The whole package weighs uh, nine and a half ounces. Um, it lofts to about two and a half inches. Um, I've slept in this comfortably into the uh, to the upper 30s, and if one were to put, say, um, my uh, emergency blanket between the, the quilt and the hammock, then you could probably squeeze another five uh, degrees out of that. Um, it was made for a hammock that it, um, where it bonded right to the uh, seam line. There were some hooks, and this had some uh, some loops in it, and so it would just snap right on. Uh, that hammock got retired. That was then. This is now. So I've refurbished uh, this particular one for use with this hammock. And an intermediate step. I had put in some cord loops in uh, an arrangement to make it fit to uh, another hammock and I'm using them again here in uh, an arrangement where I've used some very lightweight high test 150 pounds spectra. And what I've done then is I've used it as a means of suspending uh, the cord and the effect of this is going to be it's going to keep the edge of the quilt um, up high and taut against uh, the hammock as, as we will see. So to put the quilt on, we've seen this all before, the first thing to do is to drop the ridge line and then rotate the hammock. Now I'm going to put the underside of the quilt, which happens to be the green side, down like so. I've got a bit of shock cord ending in a mitten loop that will connect to the cord loop. The same up here. Down at this end, we have a length of shock cord once again. We've got a bit of cord that goes through the mitten hook and then is tied off in a taut line so that this is adjustable. And we hook it over the cord loop and do that on both sides. And then we are finished. One of the things I would like to do is see that um, the Spectra is actually pulling up the side of the underquilt, as I had hoped. And there's one way to find out for sure. And sure enough, it's plenty flat, right up against the side of the hammock as needed. So the takeaway message here is that it's possible to have a bridge hammock be at the center of a very lightweight backpacking system. So we saw in the first video that you could have your hammock and the suspension and all of that come in at less than 10 ounces. Now we've seen that we can put in a bug net, protection on the corners, and a ditty bag, and that adds less than three and a half ounces. We have an underquilt here that will scoot down into the upper 30s easily, and this adds only nine and a half ounces. Add that all up, that's 23 ounces, that's less than a pound and a half to what you see in front of you. Now all you have to do is put in a top quilt that's rated for that same temperature range, that's less than a pound, and a Cuban tarp, maybe six or seven ounces and some stakes, and you have, with three pounds, a complete sleeping system as part of your base weight, and that's right good.